production, then editing and the distribution, right? So the production is the filming of the content, editing is editing it. And then distribution is account management and actually posting it out. Mm. You should focus in on the production. You should not be doing the editing. You should not be doing the distribution. Yeah. Otherwise you're going to give yourself a full-time job and it's going to become just, there's too much friction. What are some of the strategies that you've seen? Somebody wants uh, to get started mm -hmm. in this right now. Maybe they can't afford to hire a team, you know what I'm saying? Of 40 editors to help yep. them out. What, uh, what, what strategies do you think work the best? As far as just getting started with content yeah. creation. Um, so it goes back to, you want to remove friction. And yeah. so you want to have some uh, layer of content creation that works for you. Mm. You mentioned OBS earlier, which is great. Uh, I'm on zoom calls all the time yeah. through internal meetings, sales calls, et cetera. And if you production quality does matter. So yeah. you want a good camera, you want good lighting, you want a good microphone, et cetera. If you are just like using an old MacBook, the video is pixelated, the lighting is horrible. Your face is all dark. It's an echoey mic. Like that content is not going to perform. Uh, but if you have a professional equipment set up where you're at your desk doing zoom calls, one, it makes an incredible impression on people yeah. and really helps with your calls. But two, you can also turn your calls into content using OBS. Yeah. Um, so you can have it record your, your calls and keep that top production quality. And then it immediately syncs to your Google drive and your team can come in and take over the rest. Yeah. So that's one great example of removing friction, right? Then turning that process into content and you spend no additional time to do that. Podcast is another thing that it just, it's fun to do. You make great connections. Uh, and it just feels very fluid. Like it doesn't feel like it's it, it's work when it, you're doing a it podcast. Feel, like. It feels like the algorithm gives me a little bit of a break because there's a microphone in front of me. I feel mm. like the algorithm, like it was something I noticed uh, because, you know, when I first started on TikTok, it was a bunch of lifestyle videos, which got me banned pretty quick. And then <laughs> well, on my, with your lifestyle yeah. on that platform. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then we would do, then some of my female friends, they would show, you know, they'd be in bikinis or whatever. And yeah. then their, their accounts got banned pretty quick. And then I decided, okay, let's make a TikTok, but it's only going to be clips from my podcast. And I had one clip in the first week with 15 million views and another wow, one with 8 yeah. million. Yeah, it was, it was crazy what happened initially, but it just, it felt like I got a lot more leeway from TikTok when they uh -huh. saw a microphone in front of me. Yeah. They wanted I mean, that kind of content. It's also like not a bunch of girls at bikini yeah. competitions and stuff as well. Which is, let's stop work. discriminating. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't understand. Well, like more of that. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so that, so, that what are the things that you see that are working the best? Yeah. So going back to starting, um, one that a lot of people make the mistake on is just being ad hoc with their content creation mm. and not having their, uh, the proper preparation going into it yeah. to where it's like, they try and get a video out a day and it's like every day they're like, Oh, what should I talk about? I need to film a quick video, et cetera versus you can batch all of your content. So you can put in your calendar, let's say a three hour window, and then just prepare before that batch filming session of what you're going to be talking about. If you're going to do reaction content, um, it depends on what level that you're at. I'm a huge believer in who, not how and delegating out. And a lot yeah. of this stuff is easy to delegate. You can go on Upwork and find a VA, which stands for virtual assistant and pay in the realms of three, $4 an hour for a lot of these tasks, such as finding reaction content. If that's what you want to do, they can put together a database of content for you to react to. Uh, and then when you're ready to go, you just schedule out three hours in your, your calendar and your schedule. Uh, what I also recommend to just skip back for a second is have a studio set up uh, in an area that makes it super easy for you to film. Like for me, my office is in my house and I've also turned that into my studio as well. So when I'm ready to film, all I have to do is walk downstairs, go in my office and press record. Everything's already set up versus needing to coordinate with the videographer, needing to coordinate and like go to a studio or go to this different environment, et cetera. So you can film all your content in the same setting in the same place. Yeah. And then when you have your own studio set up, um, it just makes it very seamless and frictionless. And it's also, you can ensure quality. Um, I have everything set up on like smart plugs as well to where it's like, I press a button on my phone and the whole studio turns on. Oh, wow. Uh, once. So it's like, you can systemize this stuff. Um, and once you have that studio set up, especially if you have a spot to where you can do this in your home, uh, it's best to have a camera and a mic and et cetera. But if you are more so starting on a budget, you can use a phone. Uh, you should put it on a tripod and then just sit in front of a window window where the lighting isn't bad. Like don't have a mess behind you in the background. The backdrop matters as well, but it's small things that you can do to systemize this process and then batch your content filming instead of being ad hoc, like once per day, like scrambling, trying to film the video and then using CapCut and editing it yourself and then posting it out. Next thing you know, one video took an hour. Instead, if you have the systems in place, this is really our uh, entry level program called Short Form Mastery. We give them our systems for, there's really three pillars we've broken it down into of production, then editing and the distribution, right? So the production is the filming of the content, 
Editing is editing it. And then distribution is account management and actually posting it out. Mm. You should focus in on the production. You should not be doing the editing. You should not be doing the distribution. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to give yourself a full-time job and it's going to become just, there's too much friction, right? There's too much time that goes into that. And those are also very easy and cheap to outsource when you have the right systems and training for it, which is what we provide in Short Form Mastery. Um, but if you delegate those aspects as well, then you can turn three hours of filming into 300 to 600 posts per yeah. month if you have the right preparation going into it, right? And so long story short, if you have like good quality content, uh, you're batching it and you have a lot of preparation before you start filming of the viral hooks that you're going to be using for your talking head videos, or if you have scripts, you can have the scripts written out. If you're doing reaction content, or if you do a podcast, you yeah. can batch it all together and have it immediately just go to your drive, have an editor slash account manager who can go in, clip it up, work their magic, know what to do, and they post it out for you. And it's easy to do that. And now maybe you're doing two posts a day, maybe you're doing three posts a day per account, and you should be omnipresent. Another mistake that so many people make is they're only posting on Instagram, yeah. or only on YouTube, or maybe Instagram and TikTok. You should be on all platforms that we've listed. Again, that's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Snapchat, LinkedIn, X, post omnipresent across platforms. And that's gonna, if you're doing two posts a day across seven platforms, it's 14 posts a day. 14 times 30, that's 420 posts a month. So if you're doing 420 posts a month of top quality content with great editing, and you're using viral hook frameworks, you're using reaction content, you're doing on the street or podcasts, et cetera, you're already ahead of 99% of people. I saw a stat that there's 240 million creators. You're in like the top 0.05% already just by having those set up alone. Yeah. And then it's just a matter of time. Time is the biggest asset. Stay consistent with the process. And I promise you, you'll be shocked at what can build in even like a six month time frame, yeah. if not faster. Uh, I was thinking about Casey Neistat. You remember he'd make these 10 minute videos and mm -hmm. like it would take him 20 hours to edit or even like with Mr. Beast, he'd make a video that's nine minutes long and mm -hmm. he has an entire team that edits that that's for him. That's the key, he has yeah. the team. He has that team. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I could do a three hour podcast and I wouldn't have to edit any of it. Yeah. Throw it right up there uh -huh. and then just have someone grab clips with no editing. So mm -hmm. it's one of these funny things where my three hour video took me less time to make than his 10 minute video. Right. It's like the, I was talking to Spencer Cornelia about this because Spencer okay. does these terrific 10 minute videos. Mm -hmm. And in his, his situation, it takes him forever to edit sure. these things as opposed to how what you're saying, take the long form content and cut the short pieces out. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you know, the, the idea of taking the best viral content that you have and using that for advertisement. That's mm -hmm. another great thing. Yep. That Hermosi talks uh -huh. about that. The other thing is uh, when we were talking about Zoom, Zoom is great because you can put a bunch of people on the screen. It's not great because it doesn't go above 720. And mm -hmm. you, the, the yep. quality is not that great. So that's one of the issues uh, that we've had because when you try to do a digital, uh, digital Zoom in your Zoom footage, then mm -hmm. it doesn't look that well. No, so that's why OBS is better because you right. can record in 4K. And then the last one, which I think is the most important, is the number one thing I tell people if they want to start a podcast is the place that you do your podcast needs to be like easy to get to and very mm -hmm. comfortable to produce content yep. from. Mm -hmm. So I have a studio at home and then I have sticky nice. paws here. It's 11 minutes from my place because yep. I can't have 14 people in my apartment. But yep. it's like um, the, like the, uh, as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. I let, man, I... I Go to the take pre workout, go to the gym, get a good pump, immediately sit your ass right there, turn the lights on, and start fucking recording. Like, that is a great idea because you're, you're, you're in your flow state or whatever. That is a great idea for consistently making content. I only, I only make my MOA modules and I only do the reaction videos right after the gym, mm. right after the gym. Uh, and so Why that, is that? Huh? You're just in a good state? Yeah, it's my brain. I'm just like ready to go. Like I have these crazy ideas. Maybe it's because I'm over caffeinated, but like I have these crazy <laughs> ideas and I'm just like ready yeah, to go at yeah, that yeah. point. Huh. Uh, and, I, and I get into a state where I want to do it every day. So I've gotten into a nice. every day now, it's either I'm going to do 10 reaction videos or build, or one module in MOA. Because I the problem with the modules is I have to go back through the previous module and I have to, to scrape out all the notes. And then I have to, whenever I record my modules, I do it in OBS and I have my notes sitting right on my face. It's mm. kind of weird to explain, but like my, the notepad is sitting on my face so I can see half my face and I'm reading the notes while I'm looking into the camera. Got it makes sense. It's kind of like a teleprompter. Yeah. It's similar to that. So, so I have a teleprompter set up. Yeah, I have that too. It's, I, it's so helpful. So it's, the, it's easy to build the skill set. Yeah. It's not as hard as people think. And you can, the teleprompter is 200 bucks. You can buy an old used iPad for hundred dollars. Yeah. only use it for a teleprompter and there you go you can upload your scripts into there and it makes it super seamless yes to, if you are like going off of any type of script or an outline for your video yeah for outlines i i just i just put the thing on the screen for sure. the script absolutely the uh the teleprompter and yeah. the teleprompter will have mm -hmm. like a remote that you can get with it we uh, we just set one up i'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna rec i'm filming ads tomorrow 
And one thing Grant and I realize is with the teleprompter, it takes us a quarter of the time to film the ads as it does when I when I have to memorize the lines. That mm -hmm. part is kind of, that's why I didn't make it as an actor, because I can't memorize those yeah. fucking lines. Yeah, it makes sense. I also wanted to touch on another um, strategy when it comes to conversion specifically is using mini chat on Instagram. It's okay. It's absolutely crushing. And a lot of people are doing this through feed posts as well to where it takes more preparation going into it. They're writing out a full script for the feed post. Uh, and then it's usually value-based also, uh, breaking down a strategy such as maybe you are a day trader and you focus in on trading crypto, right? And you can go in and you say, hey, these are three things that I look for that give me an 80% success rate on day trading crypto and how I've made $10,000 in the last 30 days. It's so stupid simple. You can be 13 years old. All you need is Wi-Fi. This is how I do it. Step one, you break it down. Step two, you break it down. And then in the middle of step two, uh, you also mention a resource. You're like, I use this software. If you want free access to the software, DM me the word trade and I'll get that access or comment the word trade below yeah. and I'll get you access to it. And then they continue to go through the rest of the video and it's those comment the word or DM the word call to action. Yeah, we've done that for years. They it's work terrific. incredibly yeah. well. The, the click through rate on it is just insane for lead flow. Um, and you can use that with your feed posts to where these posts will go viral mm. as well. Um, because it's not like a full on ad, it's still giving a huge amount of value, uh, but then you're just dropping that in there as well. Um, someone that I've connected with recently, super cool dude, is uh, Tuzer. He does this incredibly well on Instagram. Shout out Tuzer. Um, is a really like pioneer of their strategy and just crushed it through these uh, mini chat feed post type of ads. And you can also do it on your story as well. If you have mini chat flows LinkedIn, if you do a story CTA uh, call to action, on your story, just saying like, hey, like click the link below versus if you say DM me the word X, Y, Z, there is a difference of studies have shown a 20% click through rate of using the link sticker inside of the story versus if you say DM me the keyword, it can jump up to 77% yeah. of an increase in click through rate, which is just massive. Yeah, we just, use, I've saved replies. Whenever I get somebody sending me the word, I send them the save reply, which which sends them yep. down to the yep. funnel. So that's, that's something help. I've been doing.